I competed at Mass Destruction a few weeks ago with my three pound robot Mako. Uh, first match here is up against Crash Fest, so let's get right into it. <laughs> Careful, don't go on the fork. Get him. Drop it. Is your battery okay? Can you spin it up? Spin, hit him. Oh. <laughs> you got two minutes, don't drain your battery if you don't have to. Careful the fork, don't spin if you're square. Trying to hit that left side, just focus on getting behind him. Yep. Let's spin up that. Let's now. You gotta let it spin up all the way. Wheel. Yep. Do it again. Just keep spin. Hit him. Dude, you got this thumb war. You got this. Yeah, get the thumb war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ten seconds. I'm stuck on it. I'm trying to back up. So I eked out a decision there. Uh, first things first, I promise I tightened my saw. Uh, maybe not tight enough, and there was not any Loctite on it. Um, besides that, getting a win over Crash Fest is just a huge milestone for me. Very happy. Robert is a legendary driver, and Crash Fest is like my literally my favorite robot. Um, but Crash Fest was not its normal self. Uh, Robert was testing some new drive stuff, and you can see it was a lot slower than usual, a lot less pushing power. So uh, him and I already agreed we're going to have a grudge match in NHRL on March. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, here's. A damage part Robert gave me as a trophy, his top plate, which I sliced through a few times, and the sand shovel. There was a good slice right there where I almost went clean through it. Uh, but yeah, very glad to get that win. It was pretty dang close, actually, all things considered. Um, so yeah, the next match up here is against Sad Octopus, a kind of a meta vert, and uh, I'm going to be trying a different saw which is about 20 grams heavier and it's got a lot more mass around the edges uh let's see how it goes all right three two one fight robots fight both of them off to a very nice fast driving start not a whole lot of weapon from either of them though um no no saw blade no vertical spinner just a whole lot of drive 
It looks like we're going to be in a bit of a wedge match here. And nope, the saw blade on Mako has turned on. Oh, that sounds good. Nice big cut there from Mako. Another one, too. He's really trying to make the best of this. Still a whole lot of drive power from him. Wonderful sparks there. That looked like that went into something titanium. You can tell by the white sparks. As I mentioned in the last fight, Mako is actually based on a kit build that's made from the Builder of Subtraction. It uses the exact same four-wheel drive base, and then it's got a modular weapon arm that you can put in there. Subtraction has demonstrated both a horizontal spinner and a little waggly arm to try to pick people up off the uh, floor. Mako is making a very interesting use with a saw blade, and he has lined up perfectly to go get the drive belts there. Is he going to snip them? I think he got one. Sad octopus looking very sad in the corner. Mako is just going in for the kill. He got something nice in titanium shape there. Halfway through this fight, and so far it has been Mako's fight with no weapon from the very sad, sad octopus. He's not been able to present much of an offensive. That bendy TPU arm on Mako is coming around for some very interesting cuts and angles. Really getting behind that weapon and going for the gooey bits of the robot. Still no damage yet. And most importantly, the saw blade has not fallen off Mako, so I'm very disappointed in that. But we are seeing lots of sparks, lots of white sparks, which means titanium. Titanium is always very pretty. Let's see another one. Ooh, right down the weapon belt. If Sad Octopus had a working weapon, that would be a really sad shot. Oh, yeah. He keeps coming in trying to get it sandwiched between the weapon and the uprights. This is not a pen that Sad Octopus wants to be in. 30 seconds left in this fight. Let's see if we can't get any rally from Sad Octopus. So far, it has been a dominating performance from Mako. Even if he hasn't done a whole lot of damage to the systems of Sad Octopus, getting all those pins and all those sparks has certainly really influenced the judges. Ten seconds left. Mako is running out of battery. Is he going to limp it to a judge's decision, or is he going to get himself knocked out? He made it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mako made it with a very, very dead battery there at the end. This match is going to the judges who are calling it for your most dominating performance of the match, Mako. So I was very fortunate to get the decision there. Uh, my robot ran out of battery in the last 12 or so seconds, uh, just inching a tiny bit. Uh, the referee could have very easily carried me out, but I guess uh, gave me the benefit of the doubt there. Um, but props to the, the driver. If their weapon was working, I probably would have gotten wrecked. Um, I never really got around their side. I got a few good hits, but it was all into metal bits, not doing a whole lot of damage. Um, and even at one point, my saw was sort of wiggling in its mouth um, to where I think the, uh, the motor was melting the TPU that it's mounted into. So not good. Did get some phenomenal pictures from JCRB, so props to him. But uh, just lucky I kind of eked out another win. Next match up here is against Phantom 3, a tough horizontal spinner. You'll see I switched to a wedge config, and because of that extra weight, I have to switch to a smaller saw. I usually run 4.5 inches. This one's 3 inches and a different style. Um, we'll see how it goes. One, fight, robots, fight! Massive rush there from Mako, but it wasn't good enough. That weapon is all the way up to speed on Phantom 3. Very strong drive performance from Mako. He's trying to bully Phantom around, and now he's putting his saw blade into the weapon. This is an unheard of tactic. That saw blade is now dished. He has bit the entire thing over. Phantom 3 sneaking around the back.
Bantam three is now stuck on his side. Mako is going to make him pay for that. Mako is swept from Sawbot to Controlbot. Phantom 3 has decided to become a vertical spinner and he's slowly inching his way over towards Mako. But it's not working and Mako has decided that he's going to take the win by flipping him upside down and taking him to the cleaners for the next two minutes. Unless Mako flips Phantom 3 over, which he has no responsibility to do, but it would be cool if he did. <laughs> this is Mako's fight to lose. Mako has taken a supreme amount of damage though with his saw blade completely dished in and all of the wires going to his weapon motor are completely cut. Phantom 3 is attempting to do anything but with only two wheels on the ground and the last one, or the weapon dragging, it's not looking so great. Another ride to the other side of the arena, courtesy of Mako. Oh, no. And now these robots are stuck together until Phantom 3 turns on his weapon. Phantom 3 is back in action, but not in the way he wants to be. He's upside down and in a corner. Always a terrible place for a horizontal. And is he going to bring it over? He's going to bring it over. But Mako's going to make him pay. 45 seconds left on this fight. Mako is trying to weapon lock him. Phantom 3 spending most of the time in places he does not want to be out of the arena or upside down, but he is not giving up, not easily. A lot of tapping action going on there from Mako, but still demonstrating fantastic control. 20 seconds left in this fight. Mako has taken Phantom 3 just about every corner of the arena. Is he going to give him one more try right side up? Five seconds, four, three, tap out. tap out. Your winner with five seconds on the clock, Mako. So that was technically a, a tap out. In the last five or so seconds, his robot was completely dead, and he decided to tap out to give me the points for that victory. Um, I really appreciate that. Maybe I should have done that in my previous match, but uh, I guess I'm a jerk. <laughs> But besides that, the match went really well. Uh, got some good slams with the wedge. Um, early on, I sort of decided, well, let's just throw the saw into his spinner and see what happens. Uh, of course, I knew what would happen, but uh, that was still exciting. Made for uh, a great moment. Um, and I'll also say that time where I nudged them onto their back, I was kind of going for a sweep move. Uh, I did not realize I would be flipping them onto their back. <laughs> Um, I would have loved to keep them upright and just keep slamming into that spinner and uh, causing some crazy hits. But uh, regardless, I got some driving practice, got to slam them around a bunch, and uh, glad I came away with the win. The next match up here is against Cutthroat Cuddles. They are an undercutter that's invertible, so I'm going to be using the same config with a replace saw, of course. Here it is. Mako, are you ready? Mako's ready. Mako is hyped. Mako's ready. Audience, are you ready? Help me count down for five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Fantastic box rush there from Mako. It looks like Cutthroat Cuddles has added in some armor to try to protect his weapon. That's not going to stop the saw, which is coming in from the top. I've never seen this technique before of Cut. You're spinning. You gotta spin it down. If you're not pinned, you gotta spin it down. Okay, okay. Nice. Aw. Oh. I know, I know. Sorry.
cut, cut, cut. Hey, mess it up. You're not, you're not spinning. Your sauce is bent. That's I know it's fair. I think he's he downsized the bandwidth for the uh, weird thing. He wants to throw more energy. Nice. There it is. Minute left. Just take it easy. 50 seconds. Ran him, you have 30 seconds, you can try to kill his guy by running him. You're smoking, careful. You're smoking. I am? It's you that's smoking. I can't tell if it's your battery or what. You have 17 seconds. You're doing a great job of smoking me. Yeah! Ram him. Ram. His weapon's still on. You're smoking. So that was another knockdown, drag out match, or whatever the phrase is. I uh, came away with a decision. Was able to land some big slams with the wedge again um, and bent up their uh, little odd circular fork thing. It was a cool config, but once it got bent up, it was kind of easy for me to continue to get under them. Uh, I never really got any good saws in. I, I damaged some parts, but nothing critical. You could see their their spinner was running the whole time, um, but never landed any really serious hits against me. Um, my saw did get disabled at one point. I, if I remember correctly, the ESC came unplugged, um, but the saw was so damaged at that point, it probably wouldn't have mattered much. Um, but yeah, glad to come away with another, another decision. Um, you'll see towards the end my robot is smoking, so I have to rush it outside and open it up and see what's going on. Uh, once we get it open, we realize that it is my left side drive motor, if I remember correctly. Um, so we air out the robot and um, test everything eventually, and everything seems to be working fine. So on to the next match. Uh, this is up against Turbo. A uh, similar robot to Sad Octopus. Uh, let's see how it goes. You're spinning. Hit me, please. Wiggle your, yeah, yeah. Wiggle it as hard as you can. So, that was unfortunate. Um, my drive died as soon as the match started. Um, like I said earlier, testing it was fine. I was actually able to drive to my corner and get into position fine. But uh, as luck would have it, as soon as the match started, it the drive just did not respond. Um, afterwards, in testing, it worked about 3%. Um, I guess that's just some bad luck by me, um, but also a bad job by me. 
I should have just replaced the drive motor, tested it more thoroughly. Um, but that's a learning experience. Uh, props to Turbo regardless. They won the whole tournament. Uh, it's a kick-ass robot. Um, maybe one day um, we'll get a rematch where my robot is working properly. Um, but again, not taking anything away from them. That was a bad job by me. Obviously, if a motor is smoking, I should test it more thoroughly. I'll do that in the future. So with that loss, Mako is officially knocked out of the tournament. Um, but that's all right. Four and one. Had some kick-ass matches. Um, great experience. But uh, Mako was not actually done for the day. Seth Schaefer was there with his robot subtraction. And he challenged me to a grudge match. Uh, so of course I have to accept. Seth is actually the designer of the SSP kit, which Mako is a modified version of, and Subtraction is a different modified version of that, with a crazy horizontal spinner. And uh, I actually knew, if we face each other in the bracket, that it would be a very bad matchup for me, because his blade can go right over my wedge, and just smash right into my arm, and pretty easily take me out. Um, so I actually designed a special config that I was going to use against him, where I've got some TPU flaps that are designed to sort of slow down the weapon, um, slow it down, maybe hit him with the saw. But since this is a grudge match, we want it to be exciting. I decided who needs those, um, and actually switched to a much larger weapon. It's about twice as heavy uh, as my saws, and um, I think like six inches. So I decided, let's, let's make it fun. Here it goes. One, fight, robots, fight. I'm scared. Oh, that's, I'm so scared. I feel like it went over the table. It's, it's going to be over. Make it go. Oh, two unstable. Oh. The track doesn't have to kill, but it doesn't hit it. That's concerning. Oh, that smells good. Subtraction pushing around Nico. It's like a baseball spin. This is insane. That's the biggest hammer saw I've ever seen. Subtraction seems to be down on the ground, but that wasn't what he shot him. He has lost the ability to dunk it into subtraction, though. Very disappointing. I don't think we're going to see any weapon on weapon action. Subtraction is playing it. Oh! And there it goes. He has removed the weapon from Mako. And that's a tap out from Mako. Uh, so that's what I expected. Uh, I knew he would blast my weapon off at some point. Um, I am happy it stayed on for a little bit. Uh, I think it was a very exciting match for everyone. <laughs> um, actually, at some point early on, he cut right into my battery. Um, and considering the damage to the battery, it could have very easily ended there, but somehow my my robot limped on. Uh, that last massive hit uh, goes right towards the camera of someone filming in the audience, the footage I used. Um, I'm just, I'm happy we got to have that. Um, my robot got damaged a bit, but uh, it was all in good fun. It was a great match. And um, yeah, Seth is a legend. Uh, Getting to buy an SSP kit from him and modify it has allowed me to get into the sport and do this crazy fun stuff. Now Mako is totally, totally done for the day. Uh, but there was one more surprise, and that was that Mako was awarded with a Best Slash Most Unique Design Award. Um, it was obviously not the best design. I would say that goes to Turbo, because he won. But I'll take a Most Unique Slash Fun Design whatever they want to call it. Um, the award itself is awesome. It was a great honor. Uh, unfortunately, the one picture is kind of a Mike Wazowski moment with my brother. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a great day. Thanks to everyone who came to compete. Thanks to everyone who put it on. And uh, Mako will be back. Uh, January NHRL, I will actually be competing with Mako Fest. Um, so you can use your imagination to figure out what that is. Um, but beyond that, Mako will come back with a redesigned chassis, probably bring the arm back further to keep it safe, and uh, keep improving. Oh, and subscribe if you want to see more fights. Uh, I'm going to keep posting videos. Let me know if you like this format with me talking a bunch. 
or if you want me to shut up and edit all my fights together and post them. Again, thanks for watching.